Hey, what's up? Stu Smith here, going live. How are you guys? I will be taking some questions and also sharing my screen and showing some combat swimmer stroke videos as well. Pulling those up now just so be easy whenever you guys get on asking questions. So if you have questions, send them. Um, going to chat a little bit about uh, what I'm doing uh, this week. We are adding in a strength week into our normal um, spring, summer calisthenics and cardio cycle. We're in a pretty big run cycle right now where we're building up close to 30 miles right now, but they're fast miles. Um, haven't done any long, slow distance stuff, but the only thing slow we do might be a ruck. Uh, but we're putting in the miles. Right now, I'm putting in the reps with calisthenics. But this week, every fourth week, we all summer, we are throwing in a little strength maintenance week where we reduce the mileage a little bit, drop it down to like 15, probably, maybe a little less, 12 to 15 miles. And then we go into a um, back to our strength cycle. So it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Today was a good break. We didn't run the hill, which is a pain. Um, it's a good hill. It just takes two and a quarter miles just to get there. And then every hill you run adds a half mile to your total. So you do five hills. That's two and a half miles of hills plus four miles to get there. So you're looking at a, you know, six plus seven mile workout on that day. And it's not, once again, not slow distance. It's miles with a purpose. So if you're going to be running, I would highly suggest you run with a purpose where people screw up the most with their running is they just add miles to add miles, meaning they do 50 miles a week and there's real, no real goal to those running miles. You're just putting in miles. They might be nine, 10 minute mile pace, which where what happens um, is you will wind up learning how to run slow, which if you're trying to pass a timed run in your near future, that could be very uh, challenging to do. Because if you can't run a, at least an eight minute mile for a four mile timed run, some selection programs, whether it's Rangers or it's you know, they have to run 40 minutes for five miles um, to get in ranger school. And then SEALs have to run every week, four mile timed runs every week. Um, and if you can't do that, you're not going to, um, you're not going to pass. So, and that's the minimum standard. You don't want to go with the minimum standard. So a seven minute mile pace is what I shoot for, for everybody. So if you can do five miles in 35 minutes, five minutes under the minimum standard, you're in a good place. If you can do a 28 minute, four mile timed run, which is for the first phase of buds, that's four minutes under the minimum standard, put you in a good place. And that's where you wanna be. So it appears nobody can post any, oh, there we go. <laughs> we got some, uh, some posts here. Um, I'm going to go right into uh, the CSS critiques, um, unless you have some specific questions. Uh, I see Nick just posted a question. Uh, do you have any books or general recommendations for training for the Marine PFT as well as the CFA while doing weight training and just stop weights? Well, good question. Um, the CFA is the Candidate Fitness Assessment used to prepare yourself for a service academy. So I'm assuming if you're going Marines, you're going to the Naval Academy, which graduates about 20, 25% of their class go Marine Corps. Um, you need to crush the PFT as well, but that's not until later. Your first priority is to get to the academy by crushing that CFA. And that is a basketball toss, shuttle run, Real quick shuttle run, like 120 foot, four by 30 foot shuttle run, 
four by ten yard shuttle run. Um, pull ups, push ups, sit ups, and a mile run. So, um, yeah. So if you're doing NROTC Marines, yeah, I think you either have the IST or the PFT. The IST is basically half of the uh, PFT. Probably have to take the whole thing, take the three mile run instead of the mile and a half run. Uh, but here's the deal. Um, to get good at both of those does not require weight training. You need to get good at muscle stamina and uh, cardiovascular endurance. Basically, that, that is it. Now, if you're weak and you can't do a pull-up or a push-up, yes, your first few calisthenic challenges is a strength issue. You have to be able to turn that strength exercise into an endurance exercise by multiple reps. So your first pull-up is a strength workout, is a strength exercise. Your 20th pull-up is an endurance exercise. So... Yes, you can add weights in there more as a supplement to your calisthenics, but I would focus primarily on calisthenics and cardio if you have to take a calisthenics and cardio test, period. And yes, I do have programs for both Marine Corps uh, PFT and the uh, Service Academy CFA. Go to stusmithfitness.com, check those out in the book section. Can't miss it. Military section, you'll see it. Um, my CSS falls apart 75 yards where I, where I start gasping for air. What's your recommendation? My recommendation is to get in swimming shape. That's the reason why you're gasping for air. You might be able to run great, but you're not in swimming shape. It's a difference. Um, it's a completely different medium, and you need to learn how to get into swimming shape. So how you do that? I have a workout. It's a free workout. In fact, I'll put a link to it in the description of this video later. And it's called the 50-50 workout. First of all, you warm up with a 500-yard swim. You need to get used to swimming 500 yards without stopping. And that can be any stroke, freestyle, side stroke. I don't care. Just keep moving for 500 yards. Then you do a combination of 50-meter freestyle followed by 50 meter CSS. You rest every 100 yards, not much, but when you first start, you may have to rest significantly. Eventually, I want you to be able to rest with the CSS. When you can do that, I promise you'll be crushing the CSS. Now, I almost guarantee you, and this is a free workout, so you don't lose any money with this guarantee, if you do the 50-50 workout five times a week for the rest of this month and test yourself after Labor Day, I will bet you you'll be close to the eight-minute, 8.30 range of your swim. That's how confident I am with that 50-50 workout. And it's free. I didn't, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Now, the 50-50 workout is spread throughout my workout books but I pull it out and I share it with everybody because it works so well. It's a really good one. I've seen guys go from 1030 to eight flat in one month, multiple times, but send a video of you swimming. So I'll make sure you're doing it proper technique because if you can do a 50 yards and 50 seconds and a low amount of uh, strokes somewhere between five and six per 25 yards, you're you're good to go. We just have to get you to that 50 second 50. Then we can multiply that by 10. Next thing you know, you got yourself a 820 swim. Give that a shot. 50 50 workout. I'll put a link to the video and article in here. I talk about it all the time. If you haven't heard about it, you you're living under a rock because probably for the last year and a half, I've just been talking about the 50-50 workout. Even came up with one for the Air Force too, which is really good too. So if you go to Stu Smith Fitness, there's an article section there, search 50-50 workout, or just scroll through the articles, you'll start seeing them. Yeah, it's a good one. 
heard they're only taking people with optimal PST scores right now. Is that true? Yes. And you know what? That's the way it should be. If you have crap PST scores, you don't deserve to go to Bud's. So that's the way it should be. I'm surprised they took people with crap PST scores. All you're doing is getting a bunch of quitters showing up. So I do 10 by 100 meter interval swimming. Not bad. That's kind of like the 10, 50, 50 workout. You know, how long should my breaks be in between the intervals? Of, well, good question. Um, I would try, if you can get your swims in between that interval at 130, 140, that's really good. 140 is going to set you up on a yard per second run right or swim because a minute 40 is 100 seconds 100 yards and 100 seconds perfect that's your pace you need to be if you want to be a little faster that's fine too play around with that but you have to maintain that pace for 500 yards so my suggestion is try to get your first five with minimal rest maybe a couple breaths on the wall you know just kind of catch your breath for like two or three breaths and then go Right. Don't waste any time doing that. Now, until you get in better shape, that may be really tough to do. So my suggestion is 15 seconds max. If you got to go 30 seconds or longer, just you're just not in swimming shape. So it, it doesn't take long for you to get in better swimming shape, but you're going to have to endure some short intervals to do it. So don't rest too long. To where you're completely recovered because you just don't have that luxury when you're swimming 500 yards when you're only used to swimming 100 yards so you got to get used to swimming 500 yards so minimal rest good question though um is the pst swim in a 25 meter or 50 meter pool it depends pools are different all over the united states doesn't really matter Sometimes you're going to be swimming in a 25 meter pool. Sometimes you'll swim in a 25 yard pool. Sometimes it's 50 yards, um, 50 meters. Um, I'm struggling getting over the 350 meter hump. You just need to get in better swimming shape. Do the 50 50. Ideal time per lap 50 yards, 50 seconds. You're pretty skinny. I would put on some mass. What's your opinion of CrossFit? Moves done with proper technique, paired with rucking. All right. As for SFAS concerns, um, not bad. I don't have a problem with CrossFit. You know, but you need to mix in a lot of calisthenics for that test, as well as the Army CFT. Be part of your journey. You want to crush that as well. So that means, you know, hex bar deadlifts, medicine ball tosses, kettlebell runs, sled pulls, stuff like that. So if your CrossFit allows that or lets you do that, then, hey, go for it. I don't care what you call it. Just get in there and do some good mix of calisthenics, cardio, and some lifting for strength. Uh, let's see. All right. So that's all the questions for now. I'm going to try to share my screen, see how this works. Um, let's see, window, let's go here. Hopefully you guys can see this. All right, so you guys can see this. I am going to play the CSS I just received. Let's see what happens. All right, good, kickoff wall, really good streamline. See how he does that streamline? In fact, I'm, I'll back it up just so you see that. See that right here? One hand on top of the other, head down, chin tucked. That's good stream. I watch how far he gets off the wall after he, he could come up and do the double arm pull. So he's coming up. Nice, right there. Good. Only thing I see here right off the bat is the high elbow recovery. Probably need to keep that elbow under the water, but that's pretty easy. Probably could glide a little longer. One Mississippi, two Mississippi pull. Yeah. Give yourself another second in the glide position. You got a good pull, got good streamline, got a good kick. Uh, you didn't do the double arm pull, but that's good. You don't have to do the double arm pull. In fact, some mentors don't allow the double arm pull. 
Another thing I would probably do, those shorts are really cool, but they look like board shorts. I would get you some jammers. But you're right on pace here. I mean, this is 50 yards and 48 seconds. So that pace right there, if you can do that, um, if you can do that 10 more times or nine more times, you will have a uh, eight-minute flat swim. So that looks really good. Just clean up the high elbow and hold the glide a little bit longer. But that, that was really powerful. I like that. That's, that's looking really good. Quick question before we do another one. Getting ready for the DEA special uh, physical exam. Okay, that's the same as the FBI now. Used to be different. Used to be a really cool test. They had pull-ups in there and shuttle runs, and it was a good test. But now they've just combined, basically used the same test as the FBI, which is pretty challenging. This, this is a tough one. Start off with sit-ups, 300-meter run, push-ups, max, and where they stop your push-ups is where you stop. So there's no time limit on the push-ups, but when you stop moving, you're done. So just keep moving. Get in good shape to be able to at least do a minute of non-stop push-ups, and you should be fine. Um, and then... Um, and then a mile and a half run. So then you have pull-ups afterwards, but it's kind of like extra credit. So you you know what that is. I'm just sharing it with the uh, audience. Um, but yeah, I do have a fitness program for that. I have an app, the FBI workout app. And I also have um, FBI and DEA workout programs on Stu Smith Fitness. If you go into the law enforcement police section, You'll see both. You'll see the FBI fitness test as well as the DEA fitness test. They are the same, but uh, originally when I had written the DEA workout, it was the old test. So I just went in and modified it and made it a different workout, but same test. So it's want two different workouts of the same test. That's one way to do it, but either one to do you fine for that physical fitness test. Um, get used to taking it because a lot of people are not used to the um, sugar burn, glycogen burn of that 300 meter sprint because you got to do it fast. So there you go. Um, what would you recommend to breaking 10, 30 minutes, 10, 10 minutes, 30 seconds on the mile and a half to get to nine. So you got to take a seven minute mile pace to a six minute mile pace. You need to get comfortable learn running at six minute mile pace. So you need to practice a six minute mile pace. You know, one way not to do it is just do a whole bunch of long, slow distance runs to where you're doing eight or nine minute mile pace. That's not going to get you to a six minute mile pace. It's a way to build a base, which is fine. Some people need to do that. Or you can focus on quarter mile and half mile intervals at that six minute pace. So one of my favorite workouts to do for that is mix in some PT at first, warm up a little bit with some push-ups and sit-ups, and then go do like eight to 10 quarter mile runs at 90 seconds. So a minute 30, so that's a six minute mile pace. Now you can take some time in between, maybe walk a minute, minute and a half in between, um, if you can get your rest down to 50% of the time that you ran, that's really good. So 45 to 60 seconds, somewhere in there is your rest time for those 10 quarter miles. That's a really good workout. Um, and if you can pump that up and throw in a few half mile intervals in there as well and see if you can get them at three minutes. So the better you get at running a six minute mile pace, the sooner you will run a nine minute mile and a half pace. And you do it just one step at a time. Hit some 400s until those 400 workouts easy. Some 800s to that workouts easy. See if you can do splits. See if you can hit a 430. Yeah, 430 at uh, three laps around the track or a 1200 meter run. And just slowly build yourself up. It doesn't take too long, actually. You might be able to do it within, uh, within four to six weeks. Um, in fact, I have an article 
that is combined with that 50 50 workout that I just wrote uh, or talked about. Um, it is run and swim faster PST related. I'll put a link into the uh, description of this YouTube video. You can see it, or you can go to stewsmithfitness.com and pull it up. Run and swim faster PST related Stu Smith. If you Google that, you'll see a run workout and you'll see the 50 50 swim workout. So maybe that'll be a good one for you. All right. So let's go back to, I'll get that question in a minute, Cam. I'm just um, going to share another uh, video here of swimming. Oh, you know what? Let me share this with you real quick because this is kind of exciting. I um, have been doing uh, uh, CSS critique videos on TikTok. So you can see um, several, I just started it this week. So I put up about, I don't know, these are all new ones. So people send me videos or I copy videos and in my uh in our pool and send them in there and a lot of times i have titles so so this is a critique this guy fixed his uh over under gliding this guy needs to glide longer this guy's just doing a kickboard drill for scissor kick but you'll see all kinds of different issues that people are having so this guy's over gliding so he's losing all his momentum but then he fixes it up here so it's really uh it's really a good little thing this right here not the cs at all css at all i don't know what this is um but we had to fix it so we did yeah that's with the overarm recovery that takes out the underarm recovery and makes it illegal so it doesn't work um so anyway that is something i wanted to share with you so you can now find you can now find these on tiktok as well so um and the it's the same as my Instagram address. So Stu Smith five zero. So if you go Stu Smith five zero on TikTok, you'll see at least a dozen new videos that I just posted this week for uh, CSS critiques. So you can send them in. If you want me to put them on TikTok, I will. If you don't, I won't. So let's see. I think I have another video here. No, we just showed that one. Here's another one. See what the heck. For some reason this is really taking a long time to. Okay. All right. So let me uh, share this one because I got it pulled up. And then I will. Um, I'll uh, critique this one. So let's see what's going on here. So we got a kick off the wall, which is good at first. Too many dolphin kicks. Take those dolphin kicks out. They're not really helping you right now. All right. And just one double arm pull or skip it all together. So right here, there's, if you notice, like there's really no glide position. You just automatically start pulling. So you got to go pull, breathe, kick and glide, but there's no, you're not gliding. So, and your kick's a little wonky. So look, look what's happening with your kick. So it looks like you, you try to do a scissor kick, but you are in such a hurry to roll over on your belly that it turns into a breaststroke kick and you lose all power. So your scissor kick should look like you are going for a lunge and then you jump and you bring your feet together. Now, the other issue with this, besides that very long turnaround, you should search open turn. Yeah, take out those dolphins. They're, they're just wasting energy, not really doing anything, but making you hold your breath. All right, so this right here, notice the recovery here, All right? Way out there, you know, these, these arms need to be touching your belly, you know, as they go out in front of you. So this is like swimming with the brakes on. You know, you're kicking yourself forward, but then you're like stopping your momentum with because your arms are so far out of your belly. That's called streamlining. You are not streamlining. Um, your kick starts off like a scissor kick and then it turns into a breaststroke kick because you roll over on your belly. Um, as mentioned, that was a good picture of it. 
Yeah. And you're not putting enough effort in. This is like, you got to understand, this is a 500 yard swim test. This right here, I would call like you're walking in the park amount of effort compared to um, a timed run amount of effort. Now, it may be really challenging to you right now because you're not in swimming shape, but you got a lot of fixes here between your streamline, your body position. Um, well, your body position is pretty good. You're not popping your head up to breathe. So you're, at least you're flat in the water. But this scissor kick needs to, you need to kick on your side, hold the glide, and you, you roll over towards your belly. Um, you roll over towards your belly during the glide, not right in the middle. So you kick on your side like this, but in the middle of your kick, you're rolling over on your belly, and then your legs turn like this. That's just that's making your hips almost ineffective in this power production. So kick on your side, keep your feet together, roll, kind of quarter turn roll on your belly, or not quite on your belly. I, I like to be about 45 degree angle while I'm gliding. And then do your top arm pull, kick and glide, you know, kick on your side, roll again. <clears throat> anyway, you got a lot to fix there. So um, watch some more videos, fix that. So in a nutshell, you need to fix the top arm pull, make it a freestyle catch. You need to fix the streamline of your recovery. Keep those arms tight to your body when you recover your arms. And you need to not roll over in the middle of your kick because that's causing your kick to kind of stink. So there you go. And put a little more effort into your stroke there. Okay, let's see. A couple more questions. Some more questions popped up here. Cam, main thing I'm struggling with right now is the PST are the push-ups. Do you have a specific workout for push-ups? Well, all my workouts have push-ups in them for upper body days. So I got a lot of specific workouts for push-ups. Got pyramids and supersets and max rep sets. And, you know, you need to look up the classic week of PST training. It's an article. It's a free week of fitness training. It's really good. Um, I like to kind of start people off with this one because it has a pyramid, it has a superset, it has a max rep set, and it's all PST related. And it's free. Boom. Classic PST week. Stu Smith. Google it. Um, and you, you'll find it. But it's on StuSmithFitness.com. It's a great article. Great little workout. But that, those are the specifics I would do. Now, depending on your current score, you might be able to get away with some daily sets of push-ups for a short period of time. I do this one little protocol that I'll put in a link to it in the description below uh, for 10 days. So 10 days straight, you do push-ups. And then you take three days off of doing push-ups. And you test on day 14 people typically see an increase in there. It's just an overload principle. Um, the number that you should do, now, if you're over 80, I don't recommend doing it, but if you're 50 and below, 60 and below, you could do it because you got to multiply your current max by five, four, yeah, four to five, that range. So if you're at 50, you're going to do somewhere between 200 and 250 push-ups a day for 10 days. Um, spread throughout the day. It can be a single workout. I mean, most of my workouts, if you were to do a 110-1 pyramid, you're going to get 200 push-ups anyway. That counts as your numbers. Um, top off another 50, and you're good to go. So anyway, check out that article. It's in there. It's called the uh, Pull-Up Push-Up Free Protocol. Let me see what it's called. Um, free two-week protocol for pull-ups and push-ups and save, um, or not save, but um, typically people see a 50 to 100% increase, depending on where they start. Now, obviously, at 80, you're not going to see a 100% increase. Most people who are at 80 might get into the 90s with that one. But if you're down in the 40s, I've seen people go to 75, 80 in two weeks. So it, once again, it depends on where you're starting and how much 
potential you have for growth. That's a good way to put it. My four mile sucks as well. I cannot maintain the seven to eight minute mile pace throughout the first two miles. It goes downhill from there down to a 10, nine to 10 minute mile. By the way, thank you for all you do for us. No problem. Yeah, that's just, you just got to get in running shape. You know, build your volume. Um, you know, don't necessarily jump right into four mile timed runs if you're not ready for four mile timed runs. You know, get your pace down to that seven. I would try to flirt with the sevens um, more than the eights. Eights are decent, but they're minimum standard for most programs. How many miles a week is sufficient? Mike asks. Um, how often would you recommend changing shoes? Um, well, weeks of running, I, I don't necessarily have one mile per week of running standard. My running program through the year is a big bell curve. So I will probably at my lowest be at like 15 miles a week and at my highest be up at like 35 miles a week. And then I'll come back down. Otherwise, if you just stick at 35, 40 miles a week over and over and over again for months and months, you're going to wind up hurting yourself. Um, unless you are a 140 pound marathon runner, you know, most guys that are in the 190, 200 range are going to be having some a lot more impact forces so i cycle through the year with my not, not only my personal training but my training for the guys going to buds as well that are training with me and then we figure out when they need to be at their peak whenever they ship so it kind of depends so there's no real per specific miles per week but i would say if you want a sufficient maintenance I would say get to 20 miles a week and then all your runs are either six or seven minute mile runs. Nothing slower than that. Nothing faster than that either. No need to throw sprints in there. Six or seven minute mile pace <clears throat> and get really good at that pace. In fact, I have an article that's 20 miles a week running program and it's everything keeps you in that six to seven minute mile pace. But first you got to build up to that. 20 mile a week running program if you're not there yet don't just jump from no running to 20 miles in one week you're you're going to be hating yourself and you'll probably be hurt for months how often should you change shoes uh, you know i change shoes about every couple of months um well i say couple three to four months or i probably change shoes so if you can keep track of your mileage uh, most running shoes don't last very long past 400 or 500 miles. Um, and that's being kind of generous with it. Um, some are less than that. Um, the only shoes I've had that lasted a thousand were actually rated to be a thousand mile running shoes were the UK gear PT 1000s. I tested them out twice and took me a year to get like a thousand miles. Um, so yeah, I was hitting, hitting about a little bit less than a hundred miles a month. Right. But if you do the math, that's not much. That's like 20 miles a week. So yeah, you can do that. PT gear 1000s were, were pretty good for me. I, I kind of enjoyed them. I haven't worn them in a while. Um, so I found some others that I like. I got this uh, got this on cloud shoe that I'm wearing right now, as well as a uh, some Allbirds that are very comfortable when running. And also do some, depending on what I'm running, if I'm running trails or turf or beach, I'll run in zero shoes, X E R O shoes that are kind of minimalist shoes. Feel pretty good. All right. For someone who's not interested in the military at all, but still wants to learn these techniques, is it viable, useful, or will I look like a poser? <laughs> no, dude, I don't care. I teach all kinds of people how to do these uh, combat swimmer stroke techniques. Uh, mainly, you know, the people I see often that aren't in the military or law enforcement that learn these strokes are triathletes that hurt their shoulder somehow, whether it was a bicycle wreck or 
just jacked up their shoulder because of living. And they learned the CSS, use that bad arm as their bottom arm and use the top arm like a freestyle catch. And they're able to continue with their uh, triathlon training. So I, it's a great side stroke. You won't be a poser. Just don't go in there wearing UDT shorts and, you know, I think you'll be good to go. Um, what is the benefit of rolling onto the belly during the glide? Uh, good question. I don't necessarily roll onto my belly all the time. I personally kind of like a good quarter turn. But when I'm on my belly, I can grab water underneath me a whole lot better than I can on my side as I feel like I'm skimming the surface when I do a top arm pull. So depending on how you pull, it can really help you grab more water with that pull. And so it looks more like a freestyle catch versus this side stroke pull that may be a little awkward and not be as forceful. So that's why I roll on my belly just for that top arm pull. That's it. And some people have a hard time floating or they float too much and that top shoulder is just dragging the water. So I usually recommend instead of if you're if this is your shoulder and it's plowing through the water, you know, that surface tension slowing you down. So you may want to do a little quarter turn into it. So you're, you know, that top shoulder is off out of the water or underwater. Because like a submarine, you will travel faster underwater than you will on the surface. Hope that helps. It's a good question, though. <clears throat> a couple more questions, and then I got to bail. I got another workout I got to go do. Um, he's still been training for three years on my own. Next, different workouts, no program, using your app. I have a good Navy SEAL workout app that you can get. I think it's got like 24 weeks of workouts in it. It's pretty good. It's free, free app. Um, what program do you recommend I start with? Um, I don't know. I guess it really depends on your goals. What are you training for? Um, are you training for buds? If you are, maybe try one of the buds workouts. What's your PST scores? You know, there's so many different questions that will help me answer that question better that I have. Um, you know, if your PST scores are mediocre, I would suggest Navy SEAL Phase 1. If they're pretty good, Navy SEAL Phase 2 and 3. Um, if you're not training out for buds and you don't want to swim too much, maybe try Tactical Fitness, that book right there. That's a really good one. It encompasses everything. And you can replace swimming with biking or something. But I guess it just depends on your, your goals more than anything. All right, two more questions. Um, hey, read an old article on overtraining from you, and I found I had over half the symptoms. Hey, man, we all do. Um, I've taken the past two days off. How much should I rest before I go back? Um, you know what? You don't need to take all, you know, completely off. Why don't you do some mobility days? You know, I'll throw a link into what mobility day is. Uh, it's a great article called Never Skip Mobility Day or Don't Skip Mobility Day. Stu Smith. Check that out. That's a really good one. It is life changing. It's an easy day that can help you with overtraining and make the following workouts that week even better versus just feel like you're just trudging through at 50 percent. Um, but yeah, I you know, those overtraining. Uh, lists are long and it could be overtraining. It could be under sleeping. It could be not eating good enough. So you got to think of training and recovery like a balance, right? On this side, you have all your workouts and your work and your daily life, all the stress that's involved in that. And then over here, you have nutrition, you have sleep, you have um, hydration, electrolytes, you know, you know, mobility, flexibility, you know, relaxing, all of those things have to be in balance because if this starts weighing down on you, you got to push a little harder with your recovery, right? That may mean, you know, not eating a crap meal or going out and drinking all weekend 
you know, all of those things will screw up your recovery. Next thing you know, you may not be overtraining, you're just under recovered. So you, you got to take a look at both sides of that scale. Otherwise, um, you may be taking a day off when you really don't need it. You just need to eat better, drink better, and sleep better. <clears throat> there you go. What shoes do I use now? So that's the ones I just got through wearing this morning. They're called On Cloud. I think they're a Swiss, Swedish, Swiss, probably Swiss company that makes them. They're pretty good. I like them. Um, don't love them, but I don't, you know, I don't really love shoes anyway. I kind of bounce around depending on, um, uh, how I test and some out. Um, but I like these, the, I don't have any foot problems. So that's a good thing. Uh, let's see. All right. It's five to six hours a day of physical training enough. Yes. That could be too much as well. Because you really, if you're training that much, you have to really address recovery. Um, I do like putting in the time, you know, especially if I'm preparing for any spec ops program, got to put in the time. Uh, that means usually time doing longer extended cardio options. So longer swims are going to take at least an hour. Rucks may take two or three hours, um, you know longer runs even, but I like to just keep my runs at a good steady clip, but those will take at least 30, 45 minutes. And then you got your lift and your calisthenics, you know, so you can put in three to four hours pretty easy in a day, even with just like just my workouts here, right? This, this workout here is my latest increased strength crush the PST. That's kind of a winter lift cycle we did last uh, cycle that worked really well. Um, but yeah, if you're training that much, you have to really address recovery. Otherwise you could be, could be definitely pushing that over training zone and everything has to be in a balance. Um, all right. Two more questions. Sorry. <laughs> I got uh, about three more minutes. Uh, what run times would you estimate a typical seal to attain post buds for fitness tests? What score? on the Navy PST fitness test. Okay, so Navy PST, before buds, you're, you're gonna want a six minute mile. Sub six is even better. You can break nine on the mile and a half, you're in that gold zone that everybody wants to be. Um, don't need to be a whole lot faster than that. Nobody really cares if you're in the 830s or eight flats. You know, if you can break nine, everybody, that, that's a good standard. After buds, um, if you can keep that, you know, sub seven pace, that's going to keep you in good stead, especially with team runs and things like that. Not everybody, you know, as you age, your running is going to get a little slower. So that will definitely change. Um, but a seven minute mile pace is really solid. Um, and then be able to ruck at like a 12, you know, 10 to 12 minute mile pace is a good solid pace for rucking with like 40, 50 pounds. Um, last one, do you recommend a coach for learning how to swim? Yes. If you don't know how to swim, definitely learning by yourself. You can learn by yourself, but you know, it's, it's difficult. Um, I've had people learn by themselves. They send me videos of them swimming. I critique it for them. They fix it. They send it back. They got it fixed. That's one way to do it. Um, but, um, that's a harder way. You know, sometimes it's real nice to just have somebody teach you how to arm pull, how your body position should be. So I would suggest this, get a swim instructor for two strokes, learn how to do the freestyle, learn how to do the breaststroke. Chances are they don't know how to do the combat swimmer stroke. They may know how to do the elementary side stroke. That's a different stroke, similar, but different. Um, you can learn those two and that will help you a lot with how to kick as well as how to pull. Um, and then 99% of your swims are going to be with scuba fins anyway. So you don't necessarily need to get that good at swimming without fins. You got to pass a 500 yard swim test and tread water. That's about it, right? Everything else is going to be with scuba fins. All right, man. So with that, 
let's talk about a few things here. Um, thanks for listening. If you guys are still listening, you can go to Compete or Stu Smith Fitness and use the Compete Two Zero code and save twenty percent on any program or uh, book or ebook. Compete Two Zero. Train to compete, not just survive. StuSmithFitness.com. And then don't forget CSS critique page on TikTok, Stu Smith 50. Check it out. Send me a video. I'll post it up there. If you don't want it up there, I won't post it up there. That's fine too. But um, yeah, that's where you'll find all of my latest CSS critiques. I also put them up on Instagram, but I'm just making a page solely on the CSS critique or other swim critiques too, underwaters, drown proofing, things like that. So it's more spec ops related swimming page. All right, folks. Well, thanks for your time. Thanks for listening. Um, hope that was helpful. Um, if I didn't answer your question, I apologize. Send it to me by email, stu at stusmith.com and I will uh, get to it. We'll catch you later. Have a good one.